I'm Yasio friends and welcome back to the Torsi channel for more IU and a little bit more hive mind action which I love. <laughs> I just love looking at the comments and seeing multiple people say the same thing I'm always like all right you know you're on the right track when everyone says the same thing. And for today the vote was for Jam Jam. There were two versions of Jam Jam that were recommended to me palette and love poem. We're gonna start with palette but let's watch love poem as well because why not maybe we'll do that next week maybe we'll come back to it. Either way we will have a look at that. We also also have her comeback coming up soon. I was just saying last week how exciting it would be to see a comeback and I'm, I'm gonna get it. How about that? <laughs> We've got one coming up in a few days. So in celebration of that over on Patreon today we are going to be watching her performance of Epilogue live on Music Bank. That will be a nice little epilogue for her previous album before the new one comes out or before the pre-release song comes out. So if you would like to join us for that the link is in the description you can pop on over to Patreon for that. Also happening on Patreon of course is Hotel de Luna. We've watched a couple of episodes so far and I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. Before today Jam Jam and what has been stated to me as being really quite different to anything we've seen so far. So that's exciting. Let's go. Gotcha. Now. Cute. Love that. This is everything. setting my little musical theater heart alive. This is everything. Look at this. Get out. Oh, 
Oh, you're outrageous. Polar opposite feelings. That is so cool. And it was definitely more than just jam jam. <laughs> what was that? Ichigum. Ichigum and jam jam. Um, well, obviously, I am completely obsessed with that. Thank you very much. I'm such a musical theatre dork. Like, oh, such a musical theatre dork, which is awesome because I was reading the lyrics to jam jam before. The lyrics of jam jam were reminding me of Cole Porter, and I'll get back to that in a second. But of course, Cole Porter wrote a lot of stuff for musical theatre, and to then have those two pieces reflect musical theatre like that and have them be really very theatrical, to also have them be the opposite ends of musical theatre that Ijigum has that Rogers and Hammerstein, Rogers and Hart, sweetly, sweetly feel to it, very like cute, pretty choreography and lots of ice cream coloured dresses and that sort of thing and she just looked sweet as anything like that and then flipped into a bit of a candor and ebb, a bit of Gershwin-y type of musical theatre, something that you would see in Chicago or Cabaret with all the all black outfits and that very Fosse-esque wave that they all did where they all went Doo -doo 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 along the bar to then land on her. That's a whole other different style of musical theatre, staged differently, lit differently, costumed differently, choreographed differently. And those two pieces, one right after another, did exactly that and, and mimicked those two styles perfectly. I got a bit obsessed with her shoes <laughs> watching them. 
because in the first one, in Ichikum, it made her look doll-like and sweet and something very Wizard of Oz kind of red slipper type feel to them. But red shoes have a cultural connotation to them where for a long time red shoes meant that you were a woman of easy virtue, woman of loose morals. Only women who were really very in their bodies and sexy wore red shoes. So suddenly with that black sparkly dress and the shoulders bared, the red shoes change from being innocent Dorothy to sexually empowered woman. Totally different meaning in just the shoes. So back to the Cole Porter reference and reading the lyrics of Jam Jam earlier. For those of you not familiar, Cole Porter was a fabulous jazz composer. He wrote this song called Just One of Those Things. And if you want to hear a fantastic version of it, Diana Kroll sang just one of those things for the movie De Lovely, which was a movie based on Cole Porter's life. And indeed, the whole soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal. And Just One of Those Things is a song about a one night stand or a hot affair that has this lyric, we burn too hot not to cool down. And it's this very honest admission that sometimes you want what you want when you want it and then you don't need any more. And that's exactly what Jam Jam is, this very honest confession that sometimes in life we take our guilty pleasures and she says you know she wants something fake she wants something sugary she wants something that's bad for her body <laughs> these things like having a piece of cake or eating a lot of sweets that's something that we call guilty pleasures and she's obviously comparing a short-lived affair to having the guilty pleasures of things like that do i think a short-lived affair needs to be a source of guilt no no, I do not. But for the sake of comparison, that's what they are. It's cute if you pretend that it's something else for a little while, but hey, you know, you both know it's it's got its use by date and then that's the end of that. If you've ever seen Les Liaisons Dangereuses, which was then turned into the film Dangerous Liaisons, which was then adapted into the film Cruel Intentions, which by the way was then also adapted into a Korean drama. In Australia it's called Tempted, but I think it's called The Great Seducer elsewhere. But that is also an adaptation of Cruel Intentions of Dangerous Liaisons of Le Liaison Dangereuses. But there's that line in Cruel Intentions where Sarah Michelle Gellar says to Selma Blair, everybody does it, it's just nobody talks about it. And that's what I mean by it being honest, that most if not everybody does it, it's just nobody talks about it, unless you're Cole Porter and are you. Having that kind of Cole Porter essence to it, that Candor and Ebb essence to it, that Gershwin es essence to it, to a slightly lesser extent, Gershwin was a little bit more fanciful. But the rest of them, were really quite clear about the realities of life, love, lust, the realities of basic human instincts and human needs. And staging it, reminiscent of those artists, is such a clear indication, even if I hadn't looked up the lyrics beforehand, like I didn't look up Ichigum, I still would have got it because of the references that were being made in that costuming and the choreography, in the red lipstick and the red shoes and the bare shoulders and the dress that was cut up higher on one side than it was on the other. It's so musical theatre, but it's not just theatrical for the sake of being theatrical. They're making an allusion to artists like those I've mentioned and that particular style of musical theatre that's come before. She knows her history. It's very obvious that she knows her musical history because mm, you don't do stages like that by accident. Are you is clearly a great observer of human experience and is witty, intelligent and creative enough to be able to put pen to paper and turn that not just into lyrics but into notes, into music that feels familiar even if you can't understand the lyrics, that feels recognisable even if you can't understand the lyrics. And when you do read the lyrics you go, oh yeah, I know that. <laughs> I know that feeling. I've lived through that. I've felt that elsewhere and becomes relatable. Mm, that was really, that was really different. Everybody said how different. And now I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what she did for Love Poem because so far what we've watched from that concert has been very much a concert feel rather than a theatrical feel. It's so different as well having the two different stages, having the stage that she had in Palette where it's very much a stage and then the audience compared to Love Poem, which is the theatre in the round thing. That creates a totally different vibe of course, on a traditional setup stage, 
it is easy to then do theatrical numbers like how we see with BTS's performance of Dionysus where they were able to strike tableaus because they are being framed by a traditional stage or Shiny's performances like Queen of New York and stuff like that where again they're being framed by a traditional stage so it's easy to do that very theatrical setting but this is going to look very different I expect on the round stage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm really interested in seeing that. I'm very, very interested in seeing that. Ooh, I wonder how they differ. I'm really looking forward to that. And now for more theatrical things, epilogue. Epilogue over on Patreon. So come join for some epilogue action and some Hotel de Luna action and all of those beautiful costumes. And are you just generally being a goddess? So, you know. Thank you again for joining me. Come sunny da and setting ayo. And I will see you soon for more. Annyeong.